What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I'm here with Mike Cernovich today uh, for the next episode of the podcast slash live stream series, Make America Debate Again. If you guys don't know Cernovich, he's a, I guess, filmmaker. I I'll let you introduce yourself because you do so much. I know you just made Hoax, the new documentary. Uh, he's also one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter. Mike, thanks for having or thanks for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. I, I just kind of say flippantly journalist, author, filmmaker, because they're all true. Everybody is so busy nowadays. I mean, you're a musician and a performer and a streamer and a, what flack is. So many people are doing so many things, right? What that? What do you even describe it as anymore? Well, Fox News wrote about me and Roseanne. They called me a self-proclaimed news analyst and hip-hop artist. So not a real one. I just proclaimed to be. It's better than a far right wing conspiracy theorist. So <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. I'll t I should take my losses before they try to ruin my life. So uh, Mike's, I would say Mike's pretty controversial too on the left and the right. People seem to love or love to hate him. A lot of people are like, "Anomaly, do it, don't do it." People are either excited or very mad. But for me, Mike's one of my favorite people on Twitter because he's just not boring. He's interesting, and you're always breaking the matrix one way or another and everyone else I follow, I don't want to say everyone because there's some great people, obviously, but I feel like people are caught in these loops where I'm just reading the same stuff. So I was like, guys, Mike's Mike's fun on Twitter. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Well, and it, and it should be fun too. There, Most people are mad at me for things that they imagine that I say where they'll argue with things I haven't even said. I get, So I'll give you an example. The other day, uh, not the other day, about eight weeks ago, I just watched a movie on vaccinations called Vax. It had been banned from Tribeca and finally wanted to see what it's about. And I said, oh, I'm watching a movie Vax. People immediately started screaming, oh, my God, you're encouraging people not to not vaccinate. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? All I said was I'm watching a movie. And, but that's how people, that's how their minds go. You can just say, oh, I'm watching this controversial movie. And they'll say, oh, so you agree with it? Like, no, 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 why don't you, why don't you pay attention to what I said? I'm, I'm watching a movie that was banned, and I yeah. wanted to find out what it's about. That's one of those things with the vax. It's weird because, I, you know, I'm not a scientist, and I haven't done enough research into it, but my thought is, like, obviously some vaccinations are great, but if you pump, like, 20 at a time, I'm sure it can cause damages. And there's reports, I'm sure, in that documentary they pointed to it, but the, the media's taken that and been like, banning it from everywhere where they don't talk about it don't think about it but it's like any medicine you could take bad bill advil and it could be bad so if you can't even talk about it it's not a good vibe right or people get mad at you even when you're not talking about it just talking about like you for example if, if you're if you have some guest on they'll say oh how dare you give a platform to that person you must agree with that person blah 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 so people are usually mad about things they don't even know why they're mad. They're, they're mad about things that they think you said. Yeah, and uh, I, th that's why I made this whole platform, Make America Debate Again. And I always reference, because one of my favorite documentaries I've seen recently was Daryl Davis, who's a black jazz musician, and he got hundreds of KKK members to quit by talking to them and being cool and making them realize they weren't racist. And it's like the way that they, they think extremism is going to go away by pushing it into the shadows. And then they call people who aren't extreme extremists. Like they've called you Jack Posebic and that, like so many people all right where I follow you guys. Uh, we don't agree on everything, but it's like, you guys are clearly not all right or even far right. You're, you know, a lot of conservatives say you're too far left. And I think a lot of the reason that conservatives get mad at you, maybe you block them. A lot of people are like, he blocked me. And I know <laughs> when I block people, they get mad at me too, but also you say things that other Trump supporters don't say at all. And you might question even him, but I find it refreshing. I don't have to agree to be like intrigued and also glad somebody's saying something where I think once you turn on one side, like the, it's people freak out. So you're definitely, uh, I think you bother people in that way. <laughs> yeah. People always have a different reason to be mad at me. <laughs> and the, the whole media labeling me things too is funny because I don't even talk about race or that's what cracks me up about all this stuff is it's like the media is looking for, they need more enemies. And if you go on my Twitter, I don't talk about race. Don't really care much about it. Don't talk about Islam, don't, mo which makes Trump supporters mad at me because they think that I need to be really paranoid about Islam. When I, I don't know, I think it's kind of weird how obsessed a lot of people are with kind of creepy to be honest they, they wake up and it's like they want to talk about islam all the time so yeah let's talk about it every every month or so maybe 
Yeah, it seems to be a defense mechanism of the mainstream media, even when the James Gunn tweets came out, regardless of what you thought about them, whether you thought it was a joke or not or whatever. It, it's one thing to just look at it and say an opinion. It's another thing to say, oh, Cernovich, alt-right, racist, bad guy, don't look at it. They use that as a shield where it's like, regardless of how they feel about you, the things speak for themselves. So that it's a cover for them to not have to face self-accountability. And it's crushing the left wing because they, they don't want to be self-accountable for a second. You call them out on anything, racist, and the right is starting to do that too. Like you said, a little, you say one thing and they freak out where it's like, it's annoying. Yeah, the uh, the best articles I liked about the James Gunn stories would say, James Gunn tweeted a few things, obvious jokes. By the way, Cernovich tweeted some things years ago. They're clearly not jokes because wh why? Well, wait a minute. Why why is it that if you're on the left and you say something offensive, oh, it's just a joke? And but and James Gunn said way worse stuff than I did because he said stuff about kids. Oh, but he's just a joke. Lighten up, everybody. But if you're a conservative or on the right, you mean everything that you say. You totally, you totally little a minute. And it was kind of silly. The James Gunn thing, I think, red pilled, woke up a lot of people because you just say, yeah, that, that isn't that isn't cool. Like you can't be mad at Tucker Carlson for something he said 15 years ago, which I listened to some of the audio. It's kind of, you know, not the best look. You know, that wasn't his best day. I don't think he, he would talk like that today. But <laughs> But if you're going to be mad about Tucker, and but you're trying to say James Gunn was just joking when he's talking about little kids and stuff, you, you can't do it both ways. And that's getting a lot of people to realize just how worthless the media is. Yeah, they're, it's, they're really awful. I, I try to, obviously, left and right, there's elements, but the media and a lot of the tech companies, they're all obviously run by the left. It just so happens to be that way. And they're awful about almost everything. I was talking yesterday how even when it comes to Islam, they act like they stand up for Islam, but they're, you know, the wars and stuff that they advocate for pissed off Islam more than any annoying conservative ever could. So it's like they're always stirring up the hornet's nest, ruining everything, and they obviously have not an ounce of uh, self-accountability. So it's all hypocrisy. I was just saying on, on, on Twitter how I just kind of, I've thought about it, but I put it together where all these celebrities and people who are like, oh, Trump worked with Russia, they know they know how much China has influence. They own entire studios and stuff, and they know this stuff where it's like, oh, they're kind of influencing a little bit, but it's okay because like, you know, that's just how it works. So it's always, I'm like, you guys have called out Trump for two years about something that's probably not even true while you knowingly let other countries on all fronts fund you or, you know, change scripts and stuff like that. Yeah, there's no there's no consistency in that and that's why in Hope's movie we try to talk about unity, we try to talk about some kind of connection is we just want the equal standard, right? I think all foreign influence is bad. Saudi Arabia influence, Qatar influence, Russia influence, Ukrainian influence, China influence, you name it. And I don't know why we have to focus on only one, especially when like so for example, RT. Okay, RT. There's Al Jazeera. That's funded by Qatar, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe Absolutely. Talk about that. Why don't we just say we're America. I'm tired of these foreign outlets here propagandizing us, trying to drag us into the little proxy wars, right? So, for example, the idea that I need to care about Crimea because Ukrainian propagandists want us in America to really care about whether Russia took over a part of Ukraine. I don't care, right? I just – I'm sorry. Ukrainians <laughs> are great people. But there's a lot of things in the world that, that we have to worry about. That's one of them. Turkey, Russia flies over Turkish airspace. I don't care, right? I, I just I don't care. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar are like having beef. I don't care. Nothing, mm. right? You, it's a big, complicated world, and they're trying to drag us into all of their their affairs. And we're regular Americans like us, we're just caught in a proxy war. But the media wants to pretend like we're not caught in a proxy war, and that there's only one big boogeyman, and it's Putin, and that's that. Yeah, it's awful. And it, it's definitely causing a lot of unrest because people just need to be talked to or just throw them a bone. I tell like right wingers, when you talk to left wingers, just don't scream at them, like throw them, throw them something and then tell them how you feel. And same with the left wing. They've been so bad. And it's super annoying because they pretend like they're the most loving and compassionate, which just makes it even worse. I want to talk about 2020 because you said online you were thinking about running and that definitely had a lot of Trump supporters feeling a certain way. But I'll let you speak about it because you were saying, you know, I could maybe get one to two to four percent and that could swing an election. So it seems like you're trying to use your weight to to get some stuff done. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people they want to 
there's in Trump world, there's a, a loose coalition that a lot of people don't understand. The media never wanted to understand it. You have people who just have to ride the Trump gravy train and everything Trump does is amazing because that's the only reason anybody ever cares what they have to say. Oh, Trump's best, sporty chest, son of a gun. Well, yeah, that, that's because if the, these people talk about something other than Trump, nobody cares. They're irrelevant. And then you have the Republican kind of grifters and operatives, who that's how they make their living, by who's ever Trump. And then you have a larger, looser coalition of people who are not ideologues, and there's they have their own sort of motivations and, and their own views of America. And I always fell into that category where I just was tired of the war stuff, man. I, I was tired of, of, of a lot of things. Immigration, I didn't really care about. People say they need to fix it. A lot of people care about that. Great. That was never the issue that I really felt strongly about. I don't believe in deporting people. That I said that three years ago. I remember I got a bunch of people mad. I went on Rubin Report 2015. We were talking about Trump and why I supported him and everything. And I said, I don't believe in deporting people. I think it, it, create, it makes people afraid of law enforcement. And I don't know what we're going to do about it. But you don't want people afraid that when they leave their house, that may, might be the last time they see their kids. Now, I know the argument against that. They came in illegally. I get it. But that's just my point of view is I never really cared about a lot of the issues I care about. I care about foreign policy. And then I care a lot about free speech. And in terms of free speech, not really getting anything out of it. It's actually getting a lot worse. The crackdowns are even more intense. Banks are now banks are now cracking down on people mm -hmm. and banning banning people from banking. Mm -hmm. So th there needs to be some movement on these issues. No, I agree. That I thought a year ago, I was like, wouldn't it be crazy if they took Alex Jones off YouTube? Because I know he was like he says, tip of the spear. He's the first one to go. They did that, and then they did 20 other people. Then they kicked left-wing things off Facebook, and then they got banks to pressure people like David Horowitz and uh, I know uh, I know Laura Loomer and I'm sure other people as well, where it is pretty strange and it's going too far. So that's kind of your thought process is not enough's getting done? Well, not enough that he could do that's important that's getting done. There, I And I'll put it to people in a – a broad sort of frame is Trump never tweets about when his supporters are beaten up with a brick or banned from the internet. But if Saturday Night Live makes fun of him, you know, you can catch him on there. You can mm. catch him on Twitter beefing with LeBron James, which <laughs> look, you're, you're everyone's president. I, 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 I never liked those. When he was running, I loved it. I yeah. love because it's good TV. When you're president, you're, you're LeBron James's president. Sorry, that, that's part of the job. And you need to be saying, hey, LeBron, I saw you criticizing us. Come to the White House. And then make, Le make LeBron be the asshole. Trump, Trump seems to be playing a game of people of who can be the, the bigger asshole. And yeah. there's a time for that. If you're running a campaign, sure, let's beef. Let's get maximum drama. But when you're president of the United States, make the other guy be the asshole. You just need to say, come on in. Oh, and then the, when, the, when the person goes, I won't come talk to you. Well, now he's the asshole. He doesn't want to work with you. And, and that's fine. So a little bit more leadership on those issues, too, would be nice. I got you. Yeah. I always say I try to keep my expectations low in life because when you have too much and then you want things that aren't there, you kind of make yourself miserable. I had no expectations for Trump. I thought he was another puppet. So he's already blown past what I thought he'd do, which is amazing. And I always give him credit. But the one criticism people have where they always say, like, would you say that? Do you agree with him saying that? And I was like, no. But then they're like, would you say that? No. But I was like, ah, you know, it just is what it is. Like I, he's there and I feel what you're saying. There is a way to defuse that. But I always think of him as like, he, you couldn't get all the other stuff without his quirkiness. Like he's like, a. so I'm like, he's there. It is what it is. And unfortunately or fortunately, no one seems to be better to the point where like he clowned all of them and they're just clowning around while he's clowning on top of them. Um, yeah, Trump is – nobody could have done what Trump did. The media attack – nobody could have withstood that. And you're right. It's your ability to push through all of the negative attacks on you sometimes, you know, has a different energy. So his his willingness to pick fights with people or to fight back it can be – it's called a fatal flaw, sort of like a Greek tragedy where you, the thing that brings you to the top is also what is ultimately your undoing. 
Mm. And then in all of us, we have sort of a fatal flaw. Like, okay, I, you know, Trump really likes to fight. He does. But know that about yourself and then pick, pick a better fight. Do I really want to beef with LeBron James? Is that, well, no, how about I beef with somebody else? There's a lot of, in this world, there's a lot of beefs that we can have, right? Yeah. How about I beef with the University of California, Berkeley? That's a good beef. Yeah, but, good point. But let's see, yeah, let's see you fight with the University of Cal California, Berkeley. Put them on blast. Put Gavin Newsom on blast about the, the free speech and the domestic terrorism that they allow. Use that, use that strength and don't let that strength become your greatest weakness. And I have a lot of friends too, where when I talk to them and explain what's going on, if I was, I'm not trying to be it because I couldn't have done what Trump did, but they'd understand what I'm saying because I don't, I don't yell at like, like you said, you know, that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. And that's what, what I think the right needs to understand a little bit is it's great to get each other together, but eventually we do have to unite the country one way or another. And it has to be with words. And there are people who've been real successful um, doing that. Um, I feel what you're saying. Absolutely. Rate Trump one through 10. And what are you most impressed with and least impressed with? Eight and a half. I'm most impressed with him keeping us out of wars despite all that pressure. Oh, we got to go to war in Syria. Oh, oh, Assad, you know, is gassing his own people even after he won the, the civil war. Oh, now we got to go to Venezuela and go to war there. So I am so proud. That is why no matter what no matter what Trump does, I will never regret really pushing to help him win because Hillary, we'd be in World War III, man. So that yeah. eight and a half overall, yeah. keeping us out of wars, that really is what matters to me most. Economy's good. It's always difficult to say who's most responsible for the economy or not, but the war thing is good. Biggest flaw is not showing leadership and support for his supporters. If people are getting bricked in the head, you're president. You got to be talking about that, especially if you're going to talk about LeBron James and Alec Baldwin and Saturday Night Live. So overall, just not having the support or not backing his supporters the way he should. And I, I think a lot of people are like, don't say that, Mike, but it's actually really helpful because it's true and also – Trump does a lot of times, he's very practical. He'll do what he's pressured to do. When it was the kids in cages, it got too big, he caved. When it was like, I think some environmental thing and everyone on both sides freaked out, he was like, oh, I'll listen. He actually isn't a puppet in the sense of he will shift and take a lot of heat. Like you said, for Syria, that's not easy. They tried to make him look like a dictator, authoritarian. He still was like, you know, what? I'm not going to start a war there. So he's, he's a good guy in that issue. But People just want to follow the herd and even sometimes in the wrong direction where it's like Trump will do things that we tell him to do. And it's really true, regardless if Trump's president, Obama's president, Hillary's president, the fact that you have MasterCard and Chase shutting down people's banks and taking away their money, PayPal, entire, you know, um, vendors that are in so much control. Like if I don't have a PayPal and a MasterCard, you know, that might ruin my whole life. I might have to go work down the street again. Uh, so it's which would be fine. I, I mean, I could do it, but yeah, it's, it's a bank account business. You know? it, it's, yeah. it's at the point now where people are, are being banned from banks. What do you do when you, you can't have a bank account? And he needs to do something about that. And also, like, there's a what's it, Bolsonaro and Salvini in Italy. They're going really hard. Where I know Trump's playing his, his short game, and I, I appreciate it. And like you said, he's done more than I ever thought he would do. But I think the future is in people, even on both sides. If we didn't have like radical leftists and like angry liberals and like conservatives talking about even Islam, like it's okay, you could talk about that sometimes and weigh in on it, but come together, figure out solutions and be like, this is what we want. If we found a common goal that made sense, we could make progress. But it does seem like censorship is increasing, the banks and stuff like that, that's nuts. And it's all happening faster and faster and faster and faster. And once you lose free speech in America, it's pretty much a wrap. Like they could come for anything else. And even with Trump there, it's like one election and he's not there. And whether it's eight years or four years, it's really bad for us. Yeah. And those are, those are the issues he should worry about instead of all the donors and everything else. What you got to worry about the, you got to worry about the people on the front lines, man. And what, what a lot of people don't realize Trump supporters too, because people get mad when I criticize, Oh, first of all, they're blind. Well, blind is bad. That's actually ableist. So I don't, I don't, I try not to use that kind of terminology, but they, they don't think for themselves. They're basically right-wing NPCs, conservative NPCs, 
which is to say they're just programmed to say everything Trump does is great and everybody else should just shut up and take the hits. But they're not on the front lines taking hits. They're on anonymous profiles. They're not, mm. they're not targeted. But they'll, they'll tell you with, with their boomer account, not even their real picture, how everybody just has to sacrifice themselves for Trump or something like that, which is completely absurd. Absolutely. And you, I mean, you do research, you've broken a lot of big stories, like actual journalist stuff where you'll, you'll not even do that much journalism. But when you, you drop something, it has a huge impact. Hoax was that way. I was like, wow, this is really well done. And you could show it to people across the political spectrum. So anybody that hates on you or myself, I don't mind it as long as you're like the Michael Jordan of this, you know, uh, ring where it's like, all right, yeah, you're right. I should step it up. But it's always people anonymous and i'm like it's not that i can't take criticism it's just like someone said even in the chats i was reading they're like if anyone did what people are talking about in this chat they'd get hit up or like it's you know people put their lives in line and you guys just have this like utopian idea of what trump should or shouldn't do or i or center shouldn't do and it's like go do it man because it's it's not as easy as people think no it, it isn't and you need you need to as a leader have the back of your supporters. Yeah. Where are you on the political spectrum? Because you're saying the war is a big deal to you. And a lot of people don't understand on the left and the right that not everybody is uh, how they feel. Like not everyone cares about the wall that much. It's just true. Some people really do. But some people care that he stopped war in Syria. Some people care that they got a thousand dollars back. Some people care that he put a tariff like ev everyone like something different about Trump. Uh, so like, what is your true politics? I don't think a lot of people know. My true politics are domestic, uh, domestic policies, economic populism. Let's look about, let's look at how are people in the median income class doing? Can you get married, have kids, be able to raise your children without both parents grinding? Not really, right? Not really. Less problem. You, you ought to be able to have Wages should be such that there's the option not to live large, but the option to have one parent working, one parent home. If that if the economy is not working that way, we need to look at that. We need to quit looking at GDP because GDP is a measure of overall wealth. But if the top 1% of 1% takes 99.9% .9 of the gains, we still say GDP is up. And it's all mm. trickling down, even though all that money is bundled up in wealth and offshore and everywhere else. It's actually not trickling down. That's such a huge lie perpetuated by conservatives. Yeah. So domestically, I think, how are, how are people doing? How's that median worker doing? How's that person making 40, 50,000 a year doing? How's that working? Not how's life for people making tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars and um, skimming all the cream off of GDP. Foreign policy, we've in the US, we're, we've done enough. We've done more than enough. We've blown up more than enough other countries. We don't know what we're doing. Maybe, right, maybe we're in five years, we'll be better, smarter. Although there's a book, The Best and the Brightest, about the folly of the Vietnam War. So it seems like since Vietnam, well, the Korean War, maybe, Vietnam, for sure. What's going on, man? What, what are we going over all these countries? Blow, blowing them up, decimating them making them more chaotic, allowing more terrorists to thrive. We, we, we're done. Done with regime change, no regime change. And then on the other issues, I don't care that much, man. <laughs> if, if like the average person can just live a decent life, live a nice life, have kids and be taken care of or, you know, take care of their family, and we're not doing regime change, every people can fight about all the other issues, man. They can yell at each other over the other issues. But those, those are, for me, what creates a stable economy and stable country. I agree with what you said uh, about conservatives and the GDP because I think it's great and it's good to have more jobs, obviously, but it is a fiat system that is debt based and it seems to always boom and bust. And that's that's a reality. And also, I do think that the left is right about what you were saying, where people are hoarding most of the wealth. My problem with the left is then they say, so we should give the government more power and control. And I was like, guys, that's going to root like that is a problem. They identify the problem. Great. But then they create what would I would think would be a more disaster. So I, I agree with you and even leftists, but I tend to be more libertarian because I was like, I, the government's not going to do it. I just have that reality. So even though you identify that, 
would you consider yourself like more libertarian leaning or pr more progressive when it comes to like tax structure? Good question. I'm, I'm supporter of a wealth tax rather than high in, what most people don't understand they hear tax. Everybody thinks all taxes are the same, but here's why people who want to upward mobility in a country support low income tax, higher wealth tax. So let's say you're anomaly. You have a great year. You make, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. You're like, man, dude, I'm on the rise. Well, you're going to lose 40% of that right off the top. So there's, mm -hmm. you're hitting a ceiling now on how you can acquire wealth or hereditary wealth for you and your family. But if you have all your billions of dollars stashed away, you're just sitting on it. And your competition can't reach where you are. Your competition now is being foreclosed. So even let's say you have an even better year, you're, you're in a startup company. You get like 10 million, right? Boom, they're, half of that's gone in taxes because you're paying income taxes on all that. So it really harms people's ability to move upward and to have a functioning society that we've had in America we don't talk about this enough. What makes America great? Upward mobility. If you said to me, Cernovich, what makes America great? Upward mobility. You can be born to, like me, poor family, a couple of years on welfare, just a, a, a nobody kid, you know? And if you really apply yourself, you can move upward. And that's also why, too, I don't, I don't like the, the conservatives who claim racism. You know, I don't like it when conservatives say there's no racism in America or whatever. Just come on, people. Be real. We need upper mobility for all people, and high income tax actually destroys upper mobility. It limits you because you're, you're losing it, right? You have one or two good years. You, you now lost half of that, and then you have a bad year or a normal year, and you're almost back to where you started off. See, so we should, we should have much lower income taxes, and then we should, we should be taxing the endowments of Harvard and other universities, and we should be looking at a wealth tax. Got you. So who do you think is the most underrated cultural influencer? Because you have good, you have a good sense. Cernovich, first off, I want to say thank you for sharing my tweets on Twitter before I had any momentum. Cernovich was the first one to really roll the ball on that. And uh, I, you feel you have like really good insight, even on everything. You're talking about things no one talks about. It's such a shame our media on both sides is so trashed that anytime they talk about you, it's in such a low IQ way as opposed to like, all these ideas about upward mobility, like that's what the media should be connecting with you and getting that message to the masses. Instead, they bury you and say all this weird stuff that doesn't like lead to any sort of intellectual debate at all. Yeah, greatest cultural influences, I'm gonna partition them a little bit because there's more to it than that. So I would say people like you, people like Fleckus, people like Slightly Offensive, The Black Mike, just even though you're not necessarily, you know, you're not the Wu-Tang Clan or whatever, but people out there just in the events, getting that, doing the interviews, I think those people are completely underrated. There ought to be, if Fox News wanted to have an audience under 70 years old, <laughs> they ought to be using your guys' footage. At the, yeah. Those live, you guys have it, they can license it to you, they could, you know, pay you four or 500 bucks. It's not even that expensive. That would be major outreach to the people under 30, the people under 40. So I think the, the the people who are covering the college protests, the man on the streets kind of stuff, way underrated. Now, now you, you know, everybody's doing big YouTube videos, don't get me wrong. So that's why I mean it's a complicated question. You're, you're not underrated in terms of the younger people are watching you all, but you're underrated in the larger socio-political ecosystem. Mm. You, you guys are the ones really covering the news that matters and in front lines of culture war. And then the second group of people would be people like Ryan Saveda, I think Caleb, Caleb Howe or something is his name. They're, they're out there always getting those video clip footages of cable news, sort of doing media matters kind of work, but on the mm. left. Yeah, Ryan does really good. I, I know he's been blown up a lot on Twitter because he's always got the video. He's he's great. Yeah, so the, those guys are also, they're they're underrated as well. Who's the most overrated? Uh, ben Shapiro, Sean Hannity, most overrated. They're not moving the ball downfield at, at all. They're they're just they're you know getting. I don't want to say it's all about the Benjamins. I guess Hannity, <laughs> Hannity isn't Jewish or he's Irish. So I don't want to, but I don't even want people saying I'm trying to use the you know code race. By the way, it's all about the Benjamins. I thought was funny because 
that was like a little Kim song. Anybody listen to like Puff Daddy and Mason, everybody. Yeah. You got the reference and it just shows how corny most conservatives are. They didn't even know what the song was from. For sure. And it's funny you talk about the Fox thing because it annoys me slightly. And I'm, I'm not even when I tell my friends and stuff, I'm like, I'm not, I don't even need to be there. I'm doing fine. And I like the independence, but it's such a bad move on their part that like, I don't understand what they're, what they're doing. Like their well, strategy, I guess. Don't need them. That's, that's exactly my point. But they, if they had any kind of vision, they'd be reaching out to you guys. Hey, you know, can we get that clip? Can we get that footage? Can you all come on and, and, and talk about what you're seeing on the college campus? They, they need to, because what, what I always think about is I always think about cross pollinating. All right. So Fox, it's a bunch of old people, people, the median age of the Fox viewers, 75. So it's an old audience. People fall asleep on TV. There's actually, there was an advertiser revolt a few years ago because advertisers didn't know if their ads are being watched because very older people fall asleep with the TV on. <laughs> that counts as an ad roll, but is anybody actually seeing it? Yeah. So why don't they think about, okay, why don't we cross pollinate? Why don't we bring in, you know, the young up and comers? And, and the truth is too, not to be, you know, vain and narcissistic or whatever, but you guys are better looking than the left. The, <laughs> the, right? You go on MSNBC, these are not CNN. These are not like attractive people. So you're, and everybody kind of has their own look. You know, you have your look, Fleckus has his, Black Mike has, you know, they, everybody's got their little look. So everybody's unique in their own way. So you have people doing good work, getting good footage that are better looking, more charismatic, more intellectual, more articulate. You can bring them on, and you, but they don't, even, they don't even think like this, right? They just keep pandering. Well, Tucker does a little bit, but he still isn't doing that segment. So they're, they're, it's very old still. So when I think of people who are overrated, I think of they're just like old fuddy-duddies. There's nothing visionary. They're not talking about anything interesting. It's just conventional stuff for a very outdated audience. No new ideas, nothing fresh. It's funny you said that about the left because I look at a lot of these unhinged leftist guys on tw on Twitter and like the soy boy analogy really seems to ring true where it's, I say it as like a cry for help. I'm like, I shouldn't be the most alpha person here. Like that, you know, there should be somebody chopping wood that makes me look small. But it's like, you. I look at the competition, I'm like, guys, you regardless of what you think about right wingers you might want to lay off the soy or like do i don't know just change up the routine a little bit because it is getting very frail and uh well, visual optics matter and that that's what i always tell people too whenever people are on the right is i say if you're if you're right wing whatever that means anymore because i don't consider you right wing i don't consider right i don't consider dc drain or i don't consider you guys right wing um you got you ought to lift, man. Take care of yourselves. You always say, I want to break it. Hey, man, people ought to be able to tell if you're wearing a shirt that you're you're getting a couple workouts and you ain't got to be, you know, big big beefy or whatever. But take take care of yourselves. And the people on the right, or conservatives or whatever the heck, it, I think most people are populist. I think if you actually probed most people outside of that boomer world. And you ask them their beliefs, they might not know it. But what I said about median income formation, student loan debt, can you just live a decent life? Because I follow people's Instagrams. Nobody, none of you guys are living large. You're not trying to, to ball out. You're just you're trying to you know, make a living in this world. More people under 40 would actually identify with the, the issues that I raise than mm. with traditional you know, MAGA or traditional conservatism. Yeah, it's it's a good group, but uh, the conservative like MAGA thing needs to reach out because at at a certain point you want to not only like unite the country, but you want to win this election and you want to get as many people. And there's a lot of people who just need a little tweak on the message. It's I talk to leftists and liberals all the time, and I I tell them in a nice manner, I'm like, guys, you're getting pathetic in in a way of like you're becoming so weak and naive. I call them doormats, where it's like it doesn't matter who it is from any country here. You, you get taken advantage of because you're so foolish that it's like you're open arms and just like take advantage, walk all over me to some people. But then you just hate on conservatives all day where it's a bad strategy and vice versa with conservatives where it's like they're definitely not as weak. And I think they're right about a few more things now. But it's like a constant circus where they're like fighting about they have like a straw man or a ghost. And it's just like always punching it. It's it's annoying. Well, there um, aren't that many of them, which is the good news. The, the leftist campus hysteria gets a lot of play. But once you get out of that little weird world and into the real world, most people who are so-called leftists, they care about 
They care about abortion. They care about you know f financial stuff. They care about a lot some issues that they imagine, like the wage gap, which has been debunked you know repeatedly. Yeah. But th there is a lot of common cause to be found. There's and, that, and that's why I always tell people, yeah, I used to be kind of a troll and be a little more aggressive than I am now. And I don't do any of that anymore because that that's that was the right thing at the time. Right. When you win, you have to act like a winner. Mm. When Trump won, it was time for everybody just to say, OK, act like winners, be a little gracious. And we didn't really see that. People didn't change up their games at all. And I did. I, I made a deliberate, conscious choice to change my game. And a, a lot of people don't realize most leftists, like you said, they're not extreme. They're, they might be watching that. But when I talk to them in a calm matter, within five minutes, I get them admitting, yeah, like uh, we lost. We're doing the wrong things. Yeah, you're right. And then it's like, ah, Trump is kind of funny. Like you just got to ease in on it. And that's a huge group that they're not out. Like they're not really communists. They're kind of confused by the new wave. And it's not that hard. It really isn't that hard if you're not so hateful and mean to reach out to them. People are like, how? Just talk like you don't hate them. Talk like you're not pushing an agenda. Don't scream Islam and the wall. You could talk about it tomorrow, but you know, like take a day off and try to connect with them. Be like, you're right about the GDP or you're right about jobs or, you know, but let's not do this. Let's do this. And they're like, oh, good idea. You can't just be like, it's stupid. You're stupid. It's like, it's fun to make jokes sometimes, but it, it definitely doesn't work. And people are not that far gone. They need help. Like they need one video or one talk to change their mind and it's kind of like the red pill i always thought of like once you see through the matrix you know you don't go back yeah and a lot of the maga people they're i mean i know how they treat me which is pretty nasty for the most part fake patriot fake maga how dare you say this and i'm like i don't even want to be around you all right i don't want to be around the real hardcore maga people i've deliberately been saying things just to get them to unfollow me because they're so nasty they're such conformity enforcers that, you know, and I'm thinking, I don't like you people. And, yeah. and of course, some MAGA person is going to clip that, proving my point, and say, Cernovich claims he hates all MAGA people, which anybody who listens to the video knows that's not what I said. But that's, if I don't want to be around those people, imagine you're just a, a, a centrist or a person on the left. You're like really going to be repelled by that. And, and that's because there is a total lack of, hey, man, you said this thing. Let's talk about that. Why do you think that thing? Uh, I think you're being too hard on Trump. Have you thought about X, Y, and Z? And instead, it's your fake patriot, your fake MAGA. You yeah. know Trump to fame. I was prominent before Trump, right? And I'm thinking, I don't want to be around you people at all. So how are you going to win in 2020 when people who are sympathetic to your agenda, and in fact, did more of all the people yelling at me all the time, I did way more than any of them, for sure, to help Trump win. So people are helping Trump win because you can see it in a few other people. I won't name names, but a few of the people who are really hardcore Trump in 2015, 16 have been backing away a little bit. And a lot of that is because a lot of the real hardcore MAGA people are just not that nice to be around. Yeah. And a few straight, even even like a Coulter where I was never a big fan of hers, but I, I'm not. Hey, I'll like make a joke here or there and say, but she's been around for a while. And as far as conservatism goes, she's done it way longer than me and a lot of people. So and she also represents a small chunk of the base. And when she says something, maybe she's trying to use her weight to get Trump to build the wall. Like maybe it's not like, oh, I'm jumping ship. Like people will scream at her and hate her. And even you where it's like, they're isolating portions of the group. And then you isolate the left, obviously. You're not going to win the election that way. Trump won because Hillary was bad. Bernie people were disenfranchised. He was going to end the wars. It's not just because of his conservative agenda. That's definitely, obviously, a huge part of it. But Trump, uh, you know, he needs to be held accountable, I think, to the sense of it's not bad when you stray from the norm. And I agree. I, I, I break uh, form a lot. And uh, when I do, a lot of people do get it and that's great i don't want to throw everyone into that group but a lot of people don't and they say not only don't talk no i get it i was like you do but i'm an influencer where i can read the comments when i do these break the matrix things it's 50 60 70 percent of the comments it's not like five percent and i'm exaggerating it's like most of my following i post a lewis farrakhan interview where you don't have to like him and i know you've critiqued him as well that's that's fine what he was saying was the same thing that MAGA says. And I was trying to show up and be like, guys, there's times when he agrees with you. He told Trump that he has to vet refugees. Like, that's pretty cool that, you know, like I like to just do things that make both sides think. 
And man, 98% of the comments were like, F, F this out of here. I was like, it's a historical interview. I just want you to see it. Well, and then they attack you. And, and that's my broader point is they're, they're just angry about everyone all of the time. And I, I'm not trying to be around. Like you tweet, a lot of the things you tweet, they, they resonate with me a lot too, which is y'all are just two sides of the same coin. You just you want to regulate your authoritarians, but different sides. So the left wants to regulate pro-Trump speech, but the right wants to regulate how women dress or thoughts or you know sexually regressive kind of policies. It's the same thing, man. Like I'll, I'll give you an example. I posted there's this girl I really like. That's funny. Sarnovich says he likes this girl, right? <laughs> That's another thing. These people are dorks. Like they'll, they'll see me with girls and be like, "Oh my god!" Like yeah, my wife's hot. Like hot girls. <laughs> anyway, they're just these people are just dorks. <laughs> girl, I like. She has cool stuff. I know her boyfriend. They come to my events. She's a skincare nurse. She writes articles on skincare, and you know she'll post a little, you know, flattering. We'll call it flattering rather than revealing pictures. And I'll link to her articles. People, they'll be yelling at me. Why are you <laughs> posting this? I'm like, oh, we can't look at women in bikinis now. You know, I can't link to to women in bikinis. People will be like, oh, you must have got hacked. I can't believe it. I thought y'all are lame. You're just as lame as the left. You're all a bunch of Puritans. You're all a bunch of aggressives. There are people out there, you know, living nice lives, and I'm I'm not allowed to do that stuff. So they really are conservatives aren't any different than liberals on a lot of these issues. And that's why they lose the culture war. And it's okay if you don't want to do that stuff, but when someone is out here shifting the culture and helping you on all these fronts and you don't help them back, it's like you can't not like like I, there was someone who tweeted i don't like music or music is overrated i was like ah you don't like music that's fine if that's you but you're gonna attack somebody for being cool with women and like that's what all the kids are on and you don't have to agree with your values but if you want to change culture and shift it in a positive direction that helps you you can't just scream islam and wall on repeat and then yell at cernovich for you know sharing women's art i'm like that too are anomaly you're at the club or something with hot girls like on my instagram why are you doing this i'm like it's saturday i work out all week and i work and i don't i go out one time a week i don't drink excessively and you're mad i'm having fun and like with girls yeah there's there's so much of that and then i even think too like what you said is if you you know if you do music and you don't like your music because when i tweeted your stuff people be hating on it sometimes how about you just shut up how about <laughs> Just say, okay, Cernovich tweets 150 things a day. Yeah. A tweet of a guy trying to make it, Anomaly. Cernovich is trying to promote the guy. I was promoting Zuby before he blew up for that transgender thing. Yeah, I remember. I'm out there trying to, you know, trying to help people out. You don't like, how about you just not say anything, right? How about you just keep that shit to yourself? That net, unless a per, like if a person's really out of line. So like if I tweeted something, you know, just really, like if I dropped an end bomb or something and people were like, what the hell? I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe my, I can get that. But if I'm just posting pictures of music, people I like, people who are attractive, people doing things, you don't like that? How about you just shut up? Scroll, scroll on, it takes two seconds, and here's five more tweets that I posted in the past minute. Absolutely. And those are the same parents that have kids that are listening to music about pills and murder, and they wonder why. It's like, well, because I've... I've had millions of views and I've had label offers, but they don't want to rock with me because I never really played into that agenda at all. But if I could get those situations, I could help the agenda of like the forgotten working class. So it's like you, you're actually preventing me from helping you. It's like, I don't like your music and only it sucks. Well, I get it. You're 60, like, and some 70 year olds love it. So I don't want to knock the elderly. They've been amazing. They, I'm 80. I love your music. God bless you guys. But like, it, maybe it's not for you. I don't like rap. That that's fine, but like you said, you're you're annoying, and I do so much free content and and help so much that it feels like kind of a stab in the back where it's like it's like if you're jogging, Cernovich, I don't want you to exercise. Back to the computer, like I'm not your slave. I I'm, I'm doing good work because I want to. Well, and there, yeah, there's multiple layers to that. One is when I post a thread on like skincare, or like fasting, people get mad. Like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, what am I only allowed to do, right? But the people who are telling you, okay, you have to be chained to a computer and only tweet about media and politics. Then you release a movie, like I release Hoax. Oh, you're trying to money grab. Oh yeah, $5 and $10, you know, digital yeah, things. It's sure expensive to, to make a documentary. That's a lot of work. Like you're just doing it. For, there's a million things you could do for money. Like you made yeah. a great documentary. So they want to control everything you do 
and make you do only one thing, but then they don't want to support the one thing you do. <laughs> all, right. So they're not our friends. It's like that. It's, I, I got hundreds of thousands, not to like, but it's like, I don't need you. I, I would love and appreciate everyone. But if you're going to stab me in the back, it's easy for me to block you. Like, I don't need your energy and I don't, I, I don't want to block you, but you're, a, you're annoying me. Like I block, why the fuck you block? Cause you're dragging me down as I'm trying to do stuff. Because we read our social media. If, if we were just like most people and we just held court and demanded you, you hold, you hold court and listen to us. We wouldn't care about the hate, but I actually read my stuff. I'm reading. I want to know what people are thinking. So if you're sending negative vibrations my way, I'm just going to, I'm going to block you because I want to read what's going on. But if you're a toxic, I'm not trying to have that around me. Someone said, I'm reading the comments. They said, you sound like girls. I just put it this way. You're at a party with uh, 50 people. You know, you don't want to be around everybody. You don't have hundreds of thousands of friends. So when you influence people and you get, you know, 50, 100 messages a, a day, a week, whatever it is, and you answer them all, like I answer them all, Cernovich looks at them all. You don't want to hang out with everyone. And, and most people, if it's just a critique, it's fine. But there's something I call them low energy crabs or energy vampires or energy leeches, where it's not just that they're criticizing. I have communist people that annoy me less than some conservatives because they're just leeching and grabbing and pulling and being like, ah, and then you block it and then they email you and they're like, ah. it's like, that's the energy. It's like a little kid just dragging on you where it's like, we, when you have hundreds of thousands of people, I know you guys might not think about it, but it's like, you know, we have real lives too. Like I like to swim and I, I like to enjoy my life. Like I have 80 messages. So why in the world would I want some 25 year old guy from, you know what I'm saying? San Diego to, to be messaging me three times. I don't need that. It's not, it's not a girl thing. It's like a basic human nature. You guys probably don't even want to text five people. Imagine having to read hundreds of thousands of opinions flying at you. It's not as fun as uh, you'd imagine. Yeah, people should elevate their game, you know, raise your vibe. That's what I always tell people is like when I have an event, just you're responsible for the vibe of the party. How's it going? You, that should, that's on you. So everybody, everybody who's around needs to say, am I raising the vibe? Am I increasing the vibe or I'm detracting from it? When you think about that, you just, you live a better life anyway. I want to ask you a question about people say to me too, like anytime I stray from the norm, a few people will suggest I'm a shill or whatever. But you specifically and Jack, I think, and also Alex Jones, there's a new wave of people who keep calling you guys Zionist shills or controlled op or whatever. And some of it comes from the QAnon. For some reason, anybody that's not in their little zone, they just like aggressively attack. And to me, it's annoying because you don't you don't have to think Alex is the be all end all, but he's been here for decades. So at, at bare minimum, you could respect his place on, on the totem pole. But uh, yeah, like, w what do you think about the right and some people on the, I won't even say far right and the whatever, they'll call people Zionist shills and like that they're shilling for Israel if you support Israel or you just don't criticize the Jewish agenda. And then you have the other side where if you do criticize or you have a perspective, they call you anti-Semitic and, uh, you know, like that. They, they, what, what do you think about that? Because that's really been weird to me recently. It's like either you're anti-Semitic or you're a Zionist and there can't possibly be another explanation. Yeah, they call me a Zionist shill, Mossad, Mossad agent and everything. I don't even hardly ever talk about Israel. And that's what I mean earlier about the toxic people, which is if you're – I know a lot of my friends pro-Israel. Great, great. I know a lot of people think Israel has a lot of problems. Hey, you got an opinion. I don't sit around all day thinking about Israel. That I just I don't care that much either way, and that gets people mad. Like, well, don't you know about the foreign aid? Blah blah blah. So come on, man. Everybody knows, but we give foreign aid to all these other other repressed regimes. So that's why, when it comes to Israel, it's like, wait a minute, why are you talking so much about Israel all the time to criticize it? Maybe you are anti-Semitic. Are you talking about these other countries? A good example like that is Ilhan Omar. She was a refugee from Somalia. She lived in Kenya. She comes to the U.S. and it's Israel, 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 Israel. It's like, well, wait a minute. What about Kenya? What about Somalia? You fled these countries because they were horrific, and you come over to the U.S. and now you're obsessed with Israel. Maybe there is some anti-Semitism there. So if you're just a guy out there or a girl out there, and you're saying, oh yeah, Israel has some problems, so does all these other places, and the world's kind of a mess. To me, I'm like, yeah, that's totally cool. But if I'm scrolling your timeline and everything you're talking about is Israel. Uh, maybe that is a little anti-Semitic. Maybe you do have a problem 
with with the Israeli Jews. But the flip side too is because there's am anti-Semitism on the left and the right. The the flip side too is the people. If you're calling people a Mossad, get you're just weird. You're just a creepy person. A, a normal, well-functioning person doesn't go around accusing random people like us or others of being a Mossad. That's a, you're a Mossad agent. That's not a healthy thing. So if that's where their head goes, I'm just trying to stay away from those people. Yeah, with Ilhan Omar, I was saying I don't think she I, I don't think she likes America. I don't think she really cares about us and obviously I don't think she cares about Israel. Uh, I agree with people in that sense. I guess it was annoying because kind of like if you stand up for Israel, there's people, there's Jewish people, non-Jewish people who legitimately like Israel. A lot of Christians say it's my biblical right. I just want to hear where everyone stands and you've made some points that I've noticed as well. Because a lot of things are, are more nuanced than people believe. And you, you've said before with Israel that, uh, guys, there's some weird stuff in the news, kind of like America. And I've noticed, too, when people will shoot missiles into Israel uh, and then they'll retaliate, they'll cover that up and just say Israel's shooting them for no reason. And it's like, even if you don't like Israel, you have to tell the story right, at least at that moment. What really happened there? And the news doesn't do that. They also kind of turn on Netanyahu. They've called his son anti-Semitic. So... That's made me pretty interested too, where it's like they kind of play the game where I study the media like you do. And you've made that point where it's like, it is very interesting. Yeah. So here's what happened with me. I went from either neutral on Israel. Maybe I was a little skeptical of Israel. So I would say in 2015, I was not anti-Israel, but if you were anti-Israel, I got it. I was an Israeli skeptic. And then I would do these college talks. And people would be holding banners, free Palestine. And I would say, I don't even talk about Israel. I don't praise them. I don't damn them. I don't care. And I noticed that the far left had allied with, you know, free Palestine, whatever that means. And then I started to look into it. And I go, yeah, the, the fake news about Israel is insane. They'll say, oh, Israeli sniper killed 17-year-old. Hey, that sounds pretty bad. Holding a balloon. Oh, that's terrible. Just some little kid holding a balloon, flying a kite with mom and dad. No, yeah. no, there's actually bombs on those kites. There, it is. So the media will tell us, oh, if you read the headline, Israeli sniper shoots boy holding kite, you think, oh my gosh, you imagine yourself right at the park, at the beach. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not that's not what happened at all. So my take on Israel is that if what they're doing is so bad, you shouldn't have to lie about it. Mm -hmm. You have to lie about it and you have to exaggerate events. Then something tells me they're not as bad as you say. That was a wake up call for me months ago, too. I noticed that. And regardless how you feel about Israel, uh, it is true. They because I'll I'll see how progressives talk about it and the mainstream media. But then I'll read the article after the kid with the, the kite. And then you realize like there were 100 adults storming the border. And this, it's like the border situation here. They cover it very uh similarly what kind of i won't say shifted me but why i've been questioning more is because i noticed once she said apac you know people freaked out and then i did the research mitch mcconnell nancy pelosi both sides seem to be playing a lot with that so my problem is i do think the left legitimately doesn't like america or israel like i think they're very dangerous because they're like self-hatred it's like the self-hatred jewish person or the self-hatred american where they they hate their people more than they love any, like they they say they're claiming for love, but it seems more hate based. But then it's like on the right, they don't want to talk about it at all. So I find myself in a weird position being one of the few people who can talk about it without legitimately being hatred. Because I'll say this stuff, but then I'll be like, guys, at the end of the day, you can't blame anyone. It's, you know, you buy it, they'll sell it. You get it. Like that's how the world's working from China, US, Israel. So a lot of people don't want to accept that in my chats. They're like, no, I want to blame them all day and night. So how do you feel about that? Because that's been annoying me. I'm like, can we have any conversation about it? Because we'll, they'll talk about Islam all day. But you mentioned Judaism and they're like, don't talk, don't go there. Yeah, the, you mentioned, you nailed it though when you said so many people on the left and right hate themselves. Their, their political ideology isn't an ideology. It's just They're just angry. They're mad at the world. And they got mad at me, for example. I'm not Yang Yang or whatever, but Yang is talking about big ideas. People are mad. It won't work. How about people quit saying it won't work? Come up with your own ideas. I'm so sick of that from the, the right, especially. Oh, Alexander Ortiz, Cortez, Cortez, her Green New Deal is a dumb idea. Okay, what's your idea, tough guy? What's your idea, bro? 
Well, mm. it won't work. It won't work. You're just a hatred, negative person. And I do think her ideas for the most part are bad, but I have my own ideas. I have my other things to talk about. Yang, universal basic income, I think it's too much. There's some problems, but th let's talk about it at least. And so much of it is just people who feel like failures in their own lives. And they tell, because that's how they tell themselves. It won't work. I can't go try to get this job. It won't work. The, their mm. own mind, that's their mantra. The, the self-hate, the self-loathing, nothing I do is good enough, the negative mindset that they got to shift that mindset to an abundance mindset and think, okay, well, I don't think this will work. Here's the, way I look, here's the way I look at the world. You have an idea. You say, Mike, we need universal basic income. I say, well, okay, why do you think that? And you give me, well, it would allow arts to flourish because a lot of people who are starving artists can't, can't pay for it, be a nice insurance policy for people. America has abundant wealth. We have all this money for wars. And I would say, well, you know, so you're talking about policy then. What you're really saying is that we need to have some kind of system in place that kind of helps the average working man and woman. Would you agree? And I'll say, yeah, actually, yeah. And I go, well, how about we don't do the universal basic income? Why don't we do something else maybe? That, that's how you actually talk if you're solutions oriented, you have a positive mindset. You don't mm. get angry. Universal basic don't. Socialism. <laughs> It's not, you're not adding anything to the conversation. And that's what we get on the right or the conservatism with liberals, racist, patriarchy, Nazi, white supremacy. Hey, let's let's talk this out. Or why, you know, why do you really think that? What's going on? There's there's all these issues, and it applies with Israel too. People either say Israel's uh they go, Israel's an apartheid state, or they say Israel is anointed by God and our holy book, and because of that we have to, to you know go to war for them. It's like, well, oh, okay, what about what about it's a country of people? They fled the Holocaust. That you know they need a place to stay. Yeah, not a place. There are some problems. You know we should look at it. If if some of the reports are true, we should look into that. But why is there so much fake news about it? In other words, why can't we just say Israel's complicated? We Absolutely. Man, I want, I want to read a super chat real quick. Someone said, don't forget Q supporters like me who buy Alex's products, Cernovich's film and book and super chat you and download your music. So yeah, I wasn't trying to poop on the whole thing because I know I know it's nuanced there too. I'm just saying the mainstream movement, they seem like they attack people. I know you guys get it here and uh, I'm sure Cernovich appreciates it. I like where your head's at. I explain that to people all the time and I, they don't want to hear it. Like with Islam and even it seems like Israel, like you just don't care. You're on to like a million other things. And if you don't, care about it as much as other people they accuse you of a shill but even when i talk about stuff i've talked about very complicated issues and i've had a jewish debate you know between owen benjamin and andrew meyer who's jewish and it made people feel great on both sides and it made people interested some people didn't like it some people loved it but jewish people reached out to me and israeli people reached out to me and they love it because they know i'm i don't hate them well, and i don't hate any free criticism i talked to guys like Dr. Brian, you know, Brian of London. I have all these great conversations. I talk to the Orthodox Jewish guys and Hasidic Jewish guys all the time. I, I always say you don't actually you don't actually have real Jewish friends unless you're sending voice memos on WhatsApp. You know, right. and so we're, you know, we're ba we're bantering all day. What about this? No, you're wrong, no, you're right. It really is a, a very narrow subset of people on who on both sides who want to shut it down. But most of the people, you know, Office of Mike is on there. If you say, hey, I hate Israel, he'd be like, okay, why do you hate Israel? I actually yeah. had two guys come up to me at, um, at an event at Mar-a-Lago, and they said, we want to bring you to Israel. We think you have it wrong on Israel. They're Jewish guys. And I go, well, I'm not even critical of Israel. Like, well, we know, but we want to show you, you know, everything. And I thought, that's really what they're doing. They're, they're not getting – they're not afraid of this kind of stuff. They're not afraid. That's why the alt right's so bogus when they say, oh, they're afraid of that. People are having conversations like this every day. It's just a lie. Nobody's afraid of that conversation. Yeah, and both sides do freak out where they're like, we got to take you. And they're like, dude, I didn't even t I didn't even talk about it. That like that they freak out all the time and then the right freaks out. It's like there's no middle ground. But the truth is, regardless of how critical you are about any religion or like even Islam, there's a way to actually be successful. I think Imam Tawhidi is doing a really great job to de-radicalize people because he's Muslim, but he's breaking it down in a way that's not extreme. And he's calling out the extremists and calling them awful and calling them terrorists. That's how you're actually successful. So whether you're critical of Judaism, Islam, the right wing, the left wing, what people don't understand is hate literally doesn't work. I can not only be more effective, but I'm not getting attacked. It's not because I'm a shill, but they understand I'm not coming for them. 
and it, it's it's like in a lot of ways if you come for somebody like you're their enemy and you hate them one i think it's disingenuous because like you said i i have muslim friends and it really bothers right-wing people where i know they're not doing tequila like they're legit good people like, and they they're not extreme and they're not they're not the westboro baptist church of like they're not isis like they get it they like america and it's not a lie same with uh, a lot of Jewish people. It's like there's, I know atheist Jewish people. I know people who wear the hat all the day. I know people who are very generous. I know people who hate Israel that are Jewish. I know people that love Israel that are Jewish. There's a lot of debate there. So anytime you want to paint one group, you can, I'm open to the critiques. It does annoy me how the right says like, don't talk about that. I'm like, I ah, let people critique it because if you don't do that, it builds up and then it becomes more violent and negative. So but it, it's weird where I can't I can't stray from the norm at all. It's like guys hating it. It comes from a place of uh, I think self problems because even like you said, yeah, there's a lot of problems in the world, but you know it could be worse. I'm doing okay, and uh, I've made it from nothing, so I'm I'm not that mad at people. And e even ideologies I don't agree with. I don't hate them. I, I I feel I pray for them. I want them to you know get to a better place. Yeah, and you don't you don't win hearts and minds with negativity you, you, nobody wants to be around you that's why even when the media says trump ran a negative campaign i don't know what campaign they watched it was 99 per, you just laugh with the guy if you're if you're watching trump and you're not laughing out loud you're you're missing a plot and the same thing was true with people who hate obama i never never got into that i thought obama haters were kind of creepy oh obama do the no man come on get, get real get get real and that'll trigger a lot of conservatives but i don't care thank god i don't have to pander to these people absolutely i want to ask you about some health stuff because that's one thing i like about you and i call out i think the hotep sometimes talk about it i like people who talk about health because anybody who talks about politics and just always gets people riled up it, and then they're like you know they'll sell you pills or some sort of like health insurance or something it seems like a scam where you actually talk about health and uh i think that's important like self awareness i know you do the gorilla mindset stuff and uh also just like actual ways to level up yourself because all this stuff's a circus at the end of the day you have to level up and not just be mad all the time so uh what's what's your health diet i would say and then what's like what's a health tip off top that you think people need to know yeah a lot of political people don't know that before i ever did anything i was a mindset guy my we got, we got a gorilla mindset, a book on mindset, over a thousand reviews on Amazon, which is uh, a ton of reviews. Done, done over a hundred thousand copies. Health and fitness podcast. So me, I was just all about looking, you know, good for the Vegas pool parties. I got <laughs> and everything, and that that I was really all about that life. It's actually funny. I edited and republished some articles about you know drug experiences I had, and people were already being like, "Oh, Cernovich is losing his mind. He's going out doing drugs." Like, no, that was seven years ago. I, I don't do anything now, but not that I have a problem with certain things. But I found that YouTube can flag your channel if you're advocating drug use. So I'm not advocating drug use at all, other than to say I have some good times in Cabo with some moon rock and, you know, <laughs> and other things. And we'll just leave it at that. People think because I rewrote an article that that's what I'm doing today. So number one, the number one health that you can – learn the number one health tip is it goes back to we talked about it won't work get get over that it won't work mindset anybody can tell you why your life is going to be a failure anyone can tell the other guy or the other girl why she's going to fail why it's not anybody there's nothing novel or unique you ain't special you're like 90 percent of the world nipping at someone else's ankle it, it won't work and realize that the language you use to criticize others is the language you're using internally. Mm. So self-talk is the number one health tip, which is if, if I see what somebody's doing wrong and I immediately go to a negative place, I would say, whoa, whoa, it's a mirror. I would say, I, that's how I'm talking to myself. I can't do that. I'm too stupid. I'm too ugly. I'm too skinny. I'm too short. I'm too fat. I'm too tall. I'm too whatever. I'm using that language internally. So when I'm criticizing or hating on another person, that's because I'm, I criticize and hate myself recognize mm. those language patterns and then you then you change those patterns that's why me you know me I, i'll criticize people but i do it in a constructive way unless you know i got to get attention about trump or another issue so if you came to me and said hey you know what do you think of this song 
I wouldn't say love it or hate it. I would say, oh, this is good. There's this bar here that maybe you could change a little bit or you use this chorus a little bit too rough. It would be constructive because that's how I talk to myself. Hey, Cernovich, uh, you kind of messed up. Yeah, what happened? Well, you could have done this a little differently. You, a lot of times you have a pattern of behavior that leads you down this path, be more conscientious. That's the way I communicate myself, and that's why I'm always improving and I'm not letting my mistakes weigh me down. Mm. Because I don't say it's over with. I blew it. I say, well, okay, yeah, there was, there was a miscalculation. Let's identify that and let's change that. So number one health tip is mental health tip. Identify the language patterns you use to criticize others because that's how you criticize yourself. And then, of course, start changing those. Absolutely. I've been noticing a lot in the media, especially the left-wing media, they do projection tactics where they blame everybody of what they're doing. And it's, it is a psychology thing, like Cernovich said, is there's a good quote, you can only meet somebody as deeply as you met yourself. So if you don't, if you're not honest with yourself, you're going to see lies in other people. If you're, if you cheated, you see the cheated, like you're always freaking out. There's a psychology behind that. So a lot of the times that people are very angry and mad and critique in like an unconstructive way, it does come from a place of self-hatred. And I don't have time to like everything I do. If someone's annoying me, I'm like, hey, let's debate on my podcast. Like I'm trying to I'm rolling the ball. I'm trying to start stuff like let's let's get a cup of coffee. Let's have a good time. Like so anybody that's bringing that energy, they're like, why don't you want that energy? Because it's like the reason I'm here is because I don't have that. I'm always working but also having fun. It's not like I'm miserable. It's awesome because I don't allow that in my life. And people are like, why don't you want that? But it's like Cernovich said, you really have self-accountability, self-awareness, the number one thing I say over everything, because when you're honest and you keep it real with yourself and you're strong, it it's, doesn't come from a place of fear and hatred and like always attacking others. That means that you're like incomplete or you have way too much time. Yeah. And, I, and I'll give it, here's a good example from a chat goes, I'm, I'm reading some of the chats. They go, call out his list, make this interesting, right? And I always think that's funny, which is people who say that are inadequate, and I'll tell you why. I, I'm one of the most uh, in-demand people for commentary and everything in the world. I don't sit around there thinking, oh, I, I talk a little different than other people. I can't go talk. I can't do a podcast. At one point, this is before podcasts got huge. I had one of the biggest podcasts ever. And then I ended up, you know, doing some other things and writing and everything. So I always like it when people try to make fun of me, but it's a way that like proves my point, which is I'm out there getting it. I'm not worried about, oh, I'm, I have a limitation or I have this. I can't do that. So people in their own lives, they're saying, I can't do that because, and that because is a bullshit reason. I can't do a podcast. I have a list. I can't go you know, talk to that girl because I'm a whatever. I can't go apply for that job or to make that sale primarily because they have low feelings of self-worth. I can't promote myself because I don't feel good about myself and I don't feel good about what I'm doing. So I always love it when people try to throw that little hate or throw that little shade because it really shows that's how they feel inadequate. Mm. They're, they're by whatever making fun of me are actually really telling me that they're afraid to do something they're limited by a belief they have about themselves and they need to fix that. And that's that whole mirror thing that we were talking about right away. When people try to ridicule me or whatever, I think, well, you're ridiculing yourself. Well, yeah, you're here too, doing, doing work, you know, promoting your stuff and they're in the chat, like yelling at you. I don't have a second in my day where I have time to do that. You know, I'm working on myself, having a good time. So it definitely says a lot. And a lot of these people, when it comes to uh, Alex or you, you know, they say, I hate Alex, but they love Trump. But it's like, without Alex, there is no Trump. Without Alex, there's no anomaly. Like a Alex was one of the people in 2008 who was talking about that stuff. That's why I get so annoyed when uh, some of the QAnon people, I know there's a lot of great people and even the message board, it's cool, but the movement of it, they attack. And it's like, with no Alex, there is no QAnon movement. Like it doesn't exist without Alex. Without Cernovich, like Cernovich really supported me on Twitter when he had no reason. He had no idea probably who I was, just saw some of the stuff, thought it was interesting. And he always picked out cool stuff. It's not a government shill. He had no, like there was no communication. It was just him supporting me. So if you like me and you hate Cernovich, I mean, you're entitled to whatever you feel, but it's like he helped me on Twitter. So if you like me, you know, you should appreciate people when nobody was supporting who supported. It's like hate 
does not get anywhere and and people have no nuance it's either like shill hey you're terrible it's like it's such a bad way to live and it actually makes every problem worse which is why i call out the left-wing media so much is because they're the biggest perpetrators on the highest level of doing that a little people in the comment section is not a big deal but it's bad from every side and it, there's no winning with that uh, mindset no and i want people i want people just to win in their own lives I want, I want people in their own lives because that to win because that's how we build a better culture better society where people go oh, i don't agree with you let's talk about it uh, and me i have this eternal optimism that if I just talk to you enough, I'll be able to persuade you. I just know it. Might take me 10 years. People might take me 20 years. Might take me 50 years. But I've already seen things that I started to do become kind of mainstream. I was the first person who would clip tweets and, and video and audio of the left. Out now everybody's doing it, right? The, the conservatives of the right would never or will never sink to the, the the depths of the left. I'm like, well, then you lose. Why don't you kind of let people wake up? Hey, everybody's said some things and if one side is going to get hit for what they said the other side has to deal with it too and then we can maybe all collectively agree to chill out or what i call like a five-year statute of limitations okay how old is that five years my well, tool 10 years way too old two years okay we can talk about it let's figure it out but that but, but again that comes from a mindset of abundance uh, a sense of optimism a sense that I, I am enough. I can do more. And I spot that energy in other people. I saw your stuff and I just said, this guy's got a good vibe, man. I, I didn't know what your deal was. Didn't really care. Same thing with Zuby. I didn't, I just said, oh, this guy's got a, you, know, you can feel the energy. I said, this guy's got a good energy. I'll promote you. And whenever I find people who have a good vibe, I don't go, I don't do a background check into them, right? I'm not trying to see everything they've ever tweeted or what their views are, if they agree with mine. I think I have this a good vibe. And the world need, even if you're a lefty, the world needs liberals because most liberals, they don't have a good vibe. I, I don't see things on the left and think, I want to be around that person. I think, oh, you know, these are really unwell people. They make me feel kind of sick. Mm. So if there's liberals out there who just really are spread love and have a strong vibe. I'll promote them too. Yeah. No, that's the craziest part because that's what used to attract me to the left more. And they went overboard with Trump. They're the most miserable, hating, nasty people. Like, I've really genuinely think most journalists are legit mentally ill and have like huge self-worth problems and i don't even say that to be funny it's like really sad to me and i i wish i could help uh and with with the cernovich stuff too i mean i'm reading some comments there's a lot of things the cool thing is i can talk to anybody so if i disagree with cerno on something i can have him here and chat with it but he does a lot of um, he's rolled the ball on so much stuff some people believe different things and that's the great part about america we are supposed to be the united states of america there's foreign policy domestic policy that's the beauty and uh when you have people when you're not hateful you can have a discussion and a debate and you can either persuade minds or make your point for the world that's that's the beauty of it so it's like there's no there really is no benefit to just like hating or judging it's like if there's something that you think i'm not doing or cernovich isn't doing make your own uh, YouTube channel. And if it's good, we'll probably both promote you. I say that all the time. I'm like, you could come on or we'll, we'll promote. I want to ask you real quick, sir, no, about 5G. Like, what do you think about it? And I, I have no idea. I, obviously, there's like the doomsdayers. I think it possibly could be awful and too much radiation, but also maybe it's overrated. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, 5G I have a complicated relationship with because some people who I view as kind of unhinged started messaging me about it like months ago. And these are people where everything they send you is just, no, you just know. So my immediate response was, Oh God, you know, and the international, I found out the international firefighters association won't allow 5g towers to be put up next to fire stations. You can go on their website and everything. They claim that there have been some health problems. I don't know. But maybe they know something we don't know. But if you Google that story, you only find one media coverage of it. Uh, CBS local station out of San Francisco did it. So the media, they won't let us have this conversation, which to me is always an indicator. Maybe there's something wrong. Why is it that the firefighters won't let the towers be put by the station? Now, it could be they're being paranoid and they're wrong, right? Yeah. It could just be, you know, everybody's. You know, paranoid and they're paranoid. There's no reason their judgment 
is any better than everyone else's. But it also could be that because firefighters are in a station at 24-hour shifts, they're essentially guinea pigs, right? Because firefighters, you're 24 hours on usually, uh, 24 hours off depending on, on your schedule, 36. So they're exposed to those towers for 24 hours plus at a time. Maybe a bunch of them were getting sick. Maybe. Let's talk about it. But the media isn't even trying to have that conversation, which, as is often the case, if, if we can't even talk about it, then I'm asking questions. Absolutely. Same with, like, the vaccine thing. It's like I get that there's two sides, but it's, it is it is nuanced in that way, too. And, yeah, the, the big cell phone tower seems to be causing a lot of problems at schools. I don't know if that was 4G or 5G, but it's, like, the huge towers. I obviously think too much radiation. And I guess the 5G concept is like making a bunch of little small towers, which the pro would maybe be no big towers. And the con would maybe be way more energy in your area. And also just now with like AI. And I know there's some weird China stuff going on where like they arrested somebody in Canada and and Trump saying we got to build it before China. There there seems to be multiple battles over that, not, not just um, the radiation, but the control of 5G. I think that seems to be a big one that Trump doesn't want to lose. Uh, hopefully he's right about that. I want to ask too, maybe last thing I'll let you say anything is um, a lot of times people, I talk about solutions here a lot and sometimes I'll be like, man, this is going crazy. How can people help? Because people always say, how can I help? Like, what can I do or what can I do about it when it's like all these quote unquote problems? So what, what's your advice to people? The number one thing is be an exemplar for what you believe. Be a, How can you help help yourself? Be positive, be upbeat. That's going to reverberate more than carrying a sign or waving a flag or everything else. You know, they can always fund people like you and kick into your Patreon or however you do that. You know, five bucks a month, something like that. There's no reason not to kick in five bucks a month for you. The, they can also, again, take care of themselves. Just be a good person. Be cool. Be chill. Be the man or woman that people want to be around. Be the person that people want to invite to events. Because if you become that kind of person, you become a cultural tastemaker. Then mm. you have real clout. You have real influence. Because people go, oh, what do you think about that issue? What do you th what do you think about that issue? What do you think about that one? If you're negative, though, nobody wants to be around you. You're not going to be persuasive. You're not going to win hearts and minds. We're going to win hearts and minds one conversation at a time. And leadership starts with yourself. Uh, are you really going to – How? what's your percentage like running for president-wise, you think? Like 100% to 0%. To, to really make a statement? 65%. Wow. Thanks for joining, Mike. And also thank you for you know all the work you do. And thank you for questioning both sides. Because every time I see your stuff, you know, most of the time it's intriguing, thought provoking. And even when I don't agree with it, which isn't often, but it happens, it's not, it's not in any way like hateful or an attack. It's just interesting. Because I'm not that Set on anything. So I like to hear different sides. And I, I clearly people uh, even hear when I talk about different stuff, but they don't want to hear that at all. But that's why it makes it so important. And you're one of the only people that I follow that isn't just on loop saying the same weird stuff. And, and the culture needs that. Uh, thank you for bringing that energy. Thank you, man. Thanks to everyone else. No problem. Make America Debate Again, guys. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts or Google Play, whatever they're called. You, you guys know. All right. Have a good day, guys. Talk to you soon.